Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Star Wars The Last Jedi uh, discussion video. This one I'm going to be discussing primarily Poe, but also Haldo and Leia because it's, it's basically their side of the story that I want, I want to talk about here. And uh, next video will probably be uh, Finn, Rose and uh, DJ, as well as I suppose Phasma as well. Um, just because these are the less important ones in terms of like... Um, while I feel I probably could have done a video just on Poe on his own, we might as well throw in Haldo and uh, Leia as well to talk about. So we'll start with Leia, who, you know, like Episode 7, has a relatively small role in the movie, despite being like an important character as like the leader of the Resistance. And they continue to obviously keep the trend going of like she has this relationship with Poe and obviously sees a lot of potential in him to become a leader within the Resistance and demotes him and that leads to kind of that plot point going off. The, the, I think the, the main memorable moment for Leia in this movie is definitely um, where she is, uh, you know, part of the bridge crew that gets hit by, by the fighters and she's blown out into space. And you think she's dead, but then they cut back to her and she does that really, really cool um, force power moment because we know she's able to do the kind of sensing kind of force stuff. But here's her first like proper application of using the force. And it's a really, really cool ability because obviously the idea would be that she's able to somehow like regulate her body temperature with the force. To some degree, I'd assume... Um, create a little bit of air so it's not just you know killing her instantly and then of course you know move herself or kind of you know suck herself towards the um, the ship to get back in it's it's really really awesome and it shows like obviously they're they're talking a lot about like the Skywalker blood and here is Leia demonstrating an exceptionally strong use of the force so I feel this is something they needed to do and, and rather than and not just like skip past the idea that oh Leia never trained. No, we sort of know she must have had some training and she's actually really, really strong in the Force. That's why she can basically sense, uh, with, just with the Force, everything that's happening uh, around her. And you can see that very much the idea of her being a general is correct. Like, she is very much all about kind of business when this is happening. She has good tactics. She realizes the, um, the error of what Poe was trying to do in the first battle scene. And you know, immediately when action hits, she knows what's happening. She figures out, oh, they're tracking us to hyperspace. We're not, we don't, we don't make another jump. And she immediately orientates the ships so they're in the best defensive position. And she shows that, you know, she's been like a, a general in the rebellion, a part of the, you know, part of a military, in a military position for a very long time. And I thought that was um, really, really cool to see from her. And they obviously have her recover, um... Uh, she stops Poe's kind of mutiny and kind of explains to him what Haldo was actually trying to do. And by the end of the movie, she reunites with Rey. She senses kind of uh, Luke passing on. She had a little discussion with Luke, which, um, while I liked the discussion, it, it basically served to just kind of, for her character, accept that for her, she doesn't really see a way where she can get Ben back, where... Ben will be on her side going forward. She just sees that, that he's gone and if the only way to kind of keep things going is that he potentially will have to be killed at some point, she kind of has to accept that now um, despite being his mother. Um, and that, that was definitely a, a big a big moment of just kind of Luke and Leia both kind of accepting that that's the way they kind of have to view him now. So I do think Rey is going to be like one of the only people still who in any way believes that Kylo still has the potential to turn. Um, but um, that's 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 Leia. And I, I think in a way the, the big thing with Leia going forward is going to be how they decide to you know go about explaining her absence from Nine. And explaining what I assume will have to be the kind of off-screen death of the character. Do they say she died in a battle? Did they say she died from old age or what? When they explain that she died, does she become one with the Force or does she just die normally um, as well? Like, does she know that technique to become one with the Force? Um, there's there's a few questions, I think, surrounding it. I think they'll have to do a time skip going into Episode 9 
Um, they could do it a few ways. They could only skip ahead like a year or two. They could go five. They could go ten. It all depends on really what you're what you're really trying to do with regards to the resistance now inspiring people and you potentially, you know, the youth being inspired to join. And you'll need time for them to grow up to be a, a factor in a in an episode nine. So that's going to be a big kind of a point that they have to address. But um, you know, Carrie Fisher's performance as Leia, I thought was very well done they didn't you know give her too many like super crazy scenes but definitely got across that she's the general she is the the heart of this resistance i th i think the issue across seven and eight has been that they've never really established um in the movies leia's reputation as such which i think is a big factor in terms of explaining why the resistance doesn't have all this support that it's because Leia, in a way, has lost some of her credibility because of the reveal coming out that her father is Darth Vader. Because she, from the get-go, had issues with the First Order and formed the Resistance to fight them, even if the Republic disagreed. And so she's gone against people, and that's why it's called Resistance and not the New Republic. I wish they'd explained that in a little bit more depth, because... The movies tend to more focus on the fact that, oh, she's a princess, you know, like the, the rebellion stuff, rather than, no, what's actually happened in this new era is that Leia isn't as well respected as she was before. Um, but then it obviously begs the question of, after the First Order did what they did, why aren't they now flocking to Leia now that she's been proved to be right? So I did think they missed an arc of just making her more complex with just the situation she's in. Um, Haldo, we'll move on to Haldo next. Um... Again, another kind of controversial character. Some people absolutely hate her in this movie. Some people um, really like her. My impression is that I think they present her as being extremely unlikable for most of her scenes in the movie, but somehow managed to turn managed to turn me around on her right at the end. Not just because of her sacrifice and how cool the the actual sacrifice moment was, but because. Once, I suppose, you, you sort of more established her connection to Leia, once you made it clear what exactly she was trying to do with her plan, um, it kind of became a little bit clearer in that, like, okay, so they're not setting her up to be a villain, some sort of a traitor, or just someone who's kind of lost herself in command uh, as the resi resistance is falling apart. But I feel it's this almost indefensible point of just that... In the writing of her character, they base most of the conflict with her around miscommunication. About her not telling anyone what the plan is, and that leading other characters to do things because they don't know what the plan is. And I don't think it's necessarily just a case of like, oh, she's the, the commanding officer in this situation, so she doesn't have to explain anything to anyone. Like, this is not just a battle. This is everything that is left of the Resistance. This... What happens in this sequence, this kind of uh, chase scene, is going to determine if the Resistance exists or doesn't exist anymore. I think to some degree, the chain of command, it still means something, of course, but I think because the entire organization is at risk, there comes a point where you just have to be like a, l a little bit more open with w what what's going on, in that, is there any reason why she couldn't have just told Poe what her plan was that look we're heading to crate um towards the end we may need to use the the transports to get there because they'll be focused on the big ship when we can get there in the smaller ships explain it to him he maybe still would have got angry about what what the plan was that they're running away that she didn't want to do a confrontation sort of thing um but don't have it be just you kind of insult him you know oh you've been demoted so i don't have to talk to you at all and just completely dismiss him and other people who clearly are a bit taken aback by how she's not saying anything. Um, like, you just don't say anything to them. And you just expect it to be like, oh, I'm in command, no one needs to know anything. Um, that's where I think the problem is. Now that I've seen the movie three times, it, it's been a problem every time. Of like, I can't really like Haldo in most of her early scenes in the movie because of the way they present her as just she spends more time like putting Poe down than she does actually trying to I suppose be an effective leader 
and they try and turn it around towards the end of like, oh, she was actually trying to like protect the resistance rather than be a hero when it's just kind of like, you know, yes, Poe maybe has a tendency to go for the big heroic kind of actions, but you still could have explained the plan while still not being a hero. Like her explaining the plan isn't going to like suddenly be like, oh, look at you trying to be a hotshot here. Um, it, it, and, 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 and I like, in a way, that her plan at the end, her big sacrifice, is one of, like, the biggest hero moments. Like, Poe is, like, th that, that's a cool thing to do. That she ends up kind of doing the thing that, in a way, like, others will be kind of dismissed for. That she just does this really awesome thing. And it's, it's so well shot. And I, I think you can respect the character for doing such a powerful and amazing moment. Of making the sacrifice that she's in command here and she just accepts that no someone has to pilot this thing so that it can kind of uh, lead you to escape in the transports I have to do it I wish they had maybe established a little bit better what the Haldo Leia connection was outside of they know each other somehow because they, they seem to hint towards the fact that like Haldo knows Leia in more or less a very similar way to the way kind of Poe knows Leia, in that it's almost like, you know, they're basically setting up Poe as kind of like a, a son figure to Leia, Le Leia's a mother figure to Poe, and while maybe not quite the dynamic with daughter kind of Haldo thing, it, it feels somewhat like that. Um, because, you know, she quotes Leia, um, Poe quotes Leia, and in the end, you know, they, they turn it around because I suppose Haldo, when Poe is knocked out, says that, you know, like, he's a good one, you know, that, that he, his style, once it's evened out a bit, is something that the Resistance will really, really need. That in the end, it serves Poe's story to basically act as set up for him as a leader character. It's just, it, to me, one of the most frustrating plot points in anything is when you base a conflict between two characters around miscommunication, whether that be they refuse to talk to each other or they don't say something very important to each other for some reason. That it's just this really, really awkward um, thing and that's, that's overused in a lot of media and I didn't like it here. Um, but as I said, they turned the character around uh, by the end to the point where you actually, I think, cared about the, the heroic sacrifice that she actually made and it, it made her like okay, she more or less thought Poe this lesson over the course of this movie, but it wasn't necessarily kind of her. I think it was just Poe, in the general situation that was happening, learned th the value of, like, don't get a, a rough victory at the expense of everyone, because if there's no one left, what does the victory even mean? Um, but moving on to Poe. The, the, the thing with Poe for me when I did my preview before The Last Jedi was that I was wondering what they do with his character beyond just having him be the ace pilot. That, yes, there was always that thing of like, they're kind of, they're, they have to set him up as being the next leader. Like, especially with the news of, of Carrie Fisher's death. It, that kind of had to be his role in a way. And... Um, so how are they going to do that and in a way balance out the fact that he is this ace pilot but now he also has to be the the kind of fleet commander character as well. That Poe has to at the same time be your Anakin Luke Skywalker in the single X-Wing, uh, single single fighter, but he also has to be you know the, the Admiral Akbar, the Admiral Yularen type character of commanding the entire fleet, the big ship battles. Um, and it's still, I think, going to be the thing they have to balance out going into 9. But I really appreciated with this movie how they managed to give Poe a really, really good um, leadership arc. Of showing that, look, he's in a somewhat high command position in the Resistance. In that he is basically the, the lead pilot when they send out the fighters. He, they, they can trust him to execute on more or less anything they can. That's how good of a pilot he is. That's why they sent him out on his own to basically fight the, the the dreadnought initially and it works because um it's obviously you, this is your moment to give poe the the big action scene at the start and demonstrate how good of a pilot he is that him and bb-8 in any sort of ship is an amazing combination and it was cool because you, you saw his personality come out the fact that 
he's a bit of a joker he has like he's charming in a way and even when he's just trying to talk to hooks at the start you know he's just stalling for time but because he's so kind of jokey about it hooks is kind of like wait wait can he actually not hear me and then he just knows that he's just messing around with him and it, it, it's just fun that he's kind of constantly able to do that but also be very serious at the same time and the the decision to focus on the dreadnought um, obviously ends up being a mistake in that they lose all the bombers but they destroy this big ship I think the movie to some degree makes it clear that it was a mistake because the First Order don't seem incredibly impacted by the fact that they've lost this big ship that it really comes across as like yeah you took out a really really powerful ship in the First Order but they've got other ones you don't have any other bombers that's that's the the big difference here and um, with everything that's happening here that we've lost all of our bombers and we've taken out one of their dreadnoughts we are still in a worse position now because percentage wise we've lost more of our forces than they've lost of theirs and um, <clears throat> every one of our ships is more valuable than every one of theirs and you making this decision kind of led to that and he obviously takes the perspective of like you know, we won that battle but you know Leia's kind of like yeah but in winning us that battle you've kind of put us in a position where we probably will lose the war and that's why he gets demoted and I think rightfully so in that he, he obeys a direct order and as much as he gets the victory and to some degree the resistance can be happy that they took out that dreadnought it wasn't worth it in the end um, and then obviously after this he is demoted and he has to deal with Haldo basically for most of the movie because of what happens to Leia. He doesn't get the opportunity to go out and fight you know, pilot to pilot against Kylo Ren or anything like that. He has to basically stick to what the, the, the leadership of the resistance, resistance is dealing with. And this is obviously where he's the one to basically um, allow Finn and Rose to go on their mission with the hope of escaping the hyperspace tracking um, while he attempts to figure out what exactly the plan is with Holdo. Like, is there anything beyond just piloting forward? Anything at all that there's actually we're actually going to do here? Um, so that's a, you know, a, a big part of his, his arc definitely is just dealing with Haldo and then just I suppose learning I suppose from Leia and also Haldo a bit what what the mistake he made was in the first sequence and com comparing that with the Battle of Krait where he makes the decision to no this is a suicide run we'll get to the cannon but we'll all be destroyed by the time we get there we might destroy the cannon but the cannon's still gonna go off we have to peel off sooner rather than later and he sees that basically in a way Finn in doing what he's doing is making the mistake in a way that he made initially and he can see that now from that leadership position of he goes in over the course of this movie from I suppose being the ace pilot who is a good leader of a fighter squadron to also having the perspective of a I suppose bridge commander in a way so that was, I think, very well done because you, you very clearly now have Poe positioned as the leader of the resistance going forward. And I think that is a position that suits him. It's just he's so valuable in, a, in, in like single ship combat. Can you have him lead the entire fleet from that position? Or do you set up some sort of a dynamic where he is still going out... Uh, in the X-Wing and just has someone else to kind of act as the um, the kind of fleet commander um, there's I think Carrie Fisher's daughter character is also like fairly high up in the resistance I could see her maybe taking over um, one of those type of positions um, and you know there's still some survivor characters left who they could put in that position but um, that's definitely the, the the big point that they need to address going forward is just where are you really having Poe go here? In that I assume you'll want to have him be in a fighter pilot scene and you may want to potentially have him in a fighter pilot battle against um, you know, probably Kylo Ren because they, they've been more or less established as the two best 
there's also, I suppose, the kind of um, dream moment for the character of like, surely we can't get through the entire sequel trilogy without Poe piloting the, the, the Falcon at some point. Because he, 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 whatever he says about if he ever pilots the Falcon, that like, you know, it's a bit of a mess, but like it's, it's amazingly fast and agile or something like that. That would be a really cool thing to, to see if he pilots it. Because... They're all on it right now, so like it's 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 the perfect opportunity to do something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the 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 big thing now is to obviously rebuild the resistance. That they don't really have any big ships to command right now. Obviously, there's they do establish that there's some people elsewhere that they will rebuild, but they don't have much right now. And that Poe technically doesn't have an X-wing to fly, so it's it's the Falcon right now. And there'll be some, I suppose, stuff hidden away that means they're not completely out of the action. But um, definitely his leadership arc over the course of this movie, I think, s serves him very well as a character. And just, he, he learned everything that he kind of needed to here. And uh, the, the mutiny scene, I think, was... I think they made it understandable where from his perspective and a lot of the other younger members of the Resistance who kind of sided with Poe... They obviously didn't appreciate the not being told what was happening. And it spoke to the overall lack of leadership to a degree that either half of the crew wasn't told what was happening, half was, or just no one was told. And it was just some people who were happy to accept it, like trusting, and then the other people who were like, you need to say what's happening here, otherwise we'll actually side with the person who actually wants to do something. So it all came from the perspective of, you know, Haldo and Poe both felt like their direction would be the thing that overall helps the resistance. Um, but, you know, they, they had different approaches to it. Um, the other thing was that Poe was also able to see that Luke walking out there to fight Kylo and the, the First Order on his own was a distraction to help them get away. That he was the first one to really see that, like, he's not going out there to, like, take out the, the fleet. He's going out there purely to focus everything on him and to let us get away. We can't help him, we have to just leave. Um, and then of course, we, we end the movie with him finally meeting Rey, and it's just, the two of them both know each other, more or less through, through Finn, and just uh, what they've heard, and finally they've met. I assume we'll jump into episode 9, and we'll have the proper dynamic between the three key main characters, main hero characters, and we'll we'll see what exactly the Ray and um, Poe like relationship is like, um, so that that'll be a fun thing to see. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think he his arc in this movie was definitely the the one that surprised me the most because going into this, as I said, I wasn't sure if they'd be able to shift him away from being anything other than ju than just the Ace pilot character. Uh, but I think they managed to do that. And now it's all about how do you balance him still being the ace pilot, but also being a key leader in the resistance. And uh, in that sense, you're probably going to have to use him somewhat similarly to the way you kind of use the Jedi in the Clone Wars, where they're the generals in the army, but they're also like the head pilots and they're they're performing the, the important missions and they just have like a military commander more be the one who actually um, leads the bridge in that I think we'll maybe see one or two scenes with Poe actually sitting in the main kind of captain seat of a cruiser but I think he'll for the most part leave that job as like being the helmsman more or less to someone else uh, so yeah that's my thoughts on Poe primarily but also Haldo and Leia and that that overall section of the movie, I think, worked out uh, relatively well, uh, especially with the transition from the the, the chase scene to crate. Um, the only thing that let it down was just uh, I think the the lack of communication being the core plot point. Um, I think to some degree a lack of setup for Haldo as a character, and then I think with just overall with Leia not really establishing her her, her um, reputation heading into either of these two movies. And so, well, it's not really, I think, fully understanding the, the true scope of kind of where she is as a character right now. But, um, yeah, that's been my video for today. Uh, as I said, next time out, I'm going to be doing the whole Canto Bite section of the movie. So, uh, 
you know, Finn, um, Rose, DJ, and uh, Phasma, I suppose. But uh, yeah, that's been the video for today. Thanks for watching, and bye.